So here's a short presentation about stacking your offers, which is a method that has been emerging as we've been working through the case studies and thinking about taking these real life business models to market. Um, I, th I think it, it really comes into the strategy type of thing, but particularly campaign design. It's something that we ought to be thinking about at the strategy phase. Um, but it's really, a, a, I think, a, a campaign design exercise. And I've come up with a what I think is a really interesting model that can help us to, to visualize maybe what we ought to be doing or trying to do. So I'll quickly recap on the 8020 curve. This is a screen grab that I've taken from 8020curve.com. It's a, an online tool that was created by Perry Marshall. And what this particular graph is telling us, this is the, the rack the shotgun uh, model. There's, there's a number of different ways in which you can use it. It's a very, very useful tool. Okay, what this is telling us is, according to the 8020 principle, which is natural law, you know, it's something that, that holds true in many cases. If we had 100 people who bought something for $10, this is telling us maybe what they would pay, not for the $10 thing necessarily, but what they would pay for that kind of um, content or that kind of service or, or product packaged in a way that suits them. So this is talking about ability to pay, budget, and um, also level of need. Okay, so just applying this then, this is saying that if 100 people were all able and willing to pay $10 for this thing, then the top 20 of those people would pay getting on for $50, right? And the top 10 would pay over $100, and the number one person would be able and willing, possibly, to pay $528 for something like this packaged in a way that would suit them. So the 80-20 principle says in any segment of your market, the top 20% of that is basically worth 80% of the value of that whole segment, right? So they will generate 80% of the value. And this tends to hold true. If you read Perry Marshall's 80-20 um, sales and marketing book, he comes up with a lot of examples. So out of any group of donors, right, whether it's for a church or a political party, the top 20% of those will generally donate 80% of all the, the cash. Out of a group of volunteers, the most active 20% will do 80% of the work. And, and this even holds true in, in nature. I mean, there, there are some things where 80-20 doesn't apply and a normal bell curve, which is we're more familiar with, applies. For example, you know, people's heights or shoe sizes. You know, people will tend to the normal because that has upper and lower limits. You cannot have one inch size feet as an adult. You can't have two, you know, three foot long feet. It just doesn't work. There's, that's constrained by nature. So that will force things to tend to the center. However, when you find there is no upper limit, for example, we'll take things like uh, the earnings of sports players, right? If you take everyone who plays tennis, the top 20% of those people will earn 80% of all the money of all those professional tennis players. And the top 20% of those, your Federers and whatever, will earn 80% of that group, okay? Same goes for actors, musicians, whatever you like, book authors, right? Most authors are not wealthy. Most actors, most singers, most musicians are not wealthy and the few of them are. And that's because we've got a situation where there is really no upper limit. Okay, so this, that's basically 80 20 in a nutshell. And the top 20% of the top 20% can account for a lot more and so on. It's actually a fractal situation. And if, you've, uh, if you're familiar with Ken McCarthy's football game pricing, this ties in absolutely perfectly. So Ken was talking about this years ago. He's saying that people will be willing to pay. A lot of people will, will quite happily pay for their cable subscription so they can sit and watch a football game at home. Some people will go to the stadium and pay a $2, uh, sorry, a two-figure fee to watch the game from the back of the stadium. Other people will go down onto the you know, halfway line and pay three 
figure fee, other people will go into a corporate box and pay a four-figure fee. What's interesting, he's saying, is it's, just, it's the same game fundamentally, but people are paying to experience it and to receive it packaged in different ways. So what they're not paying for the football game. They're paying for something else. All right? The sports fan may be happy to sit at home and watch it, but somebody who is giving somebody a birthday present may want to pay a three-figure fee. Someone who's wanting to impress a client from overseas might be, you know, what they're getting for that is they're not getting the game. They're getting something else. So what all of this is telling us then is that people actually want the thing that you do, what we might call your global proposition, what you're about, what you offer to the world. They want that packaged in many different ways, not just one. Some of those people will have a small budget. They literally couldn't pay $1,000. You know, if, if, if it was $1,000, doesn't matter how good value it is, they don't have it. So some people have small budgets and more time. Um, other people will have a lot more budget, but a lot less time, maybe more urgency. So what this means is that you've got, at one end of the market, you've got a DIY audience, it's do-it-yourself audience. Others want a done-for-you service, and all of that is right and all of that is true. And I think that these slices can be mutually exclusive, like we're saying. The, the person who would be happy to spend $27 on a, an ebook or a, or a video course so that they can learn something and practice it themselves, they couldn't pay $27,000 for a consulting package. But by the same token, a company that needs something doing urgently and doing well, they aren't even going to consider a $27 do-it-yourself ebook. So these slices in the market can be mutually exclusive and that's really the key to maximizing the the revenue you know if we go back to the the 80 20 curve out of those 100 people who were willing to pay 10 10 dollars for this thing there will be some i believe that would pay even more who because they're the ones who wouldn't even consider spending 10 dollars on something so how can we then as strategic marketers actually put all of this stuff into practice. Well, the obvious thing would say it makes sense for us to provide a pyramid of offers. So we've got a large base at the bottom going up to a, a smaller tip at the top. The base would start from your free stuff. This is content marketing, this is blogging, this is putting out your information to the world that tells people what you do, right? Um, it's really important to give the world a flavor of what you offer. Now, I actually came up with what might be a useful um, kind of rule of thumb for this the other day. I, I was attending a, a conference on Lean Startup, and I was sitting there thinking, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind getting up on the stage and, and sharing some of this, this stuff. And it got me thinking that there's, there's people on there, on the stage, doing their 30-minute or 60-minute slot, and they're talking about the book that they wrote or the work that they do. And it just struck me that, well, maybe what we give the world for free should be what you would say in one of those sessions, right? If you had 30 to 60 minutes with an audience or one-on-one -on -one or in a sales meeting, whatever it may be, what would you tell people? How much could you tell people um, in a, a one-to-many situation? So I think that would be really useful. You know, if, if you were to get up um, or your client was to get up on stage and do a 30 to 60 minute presentation on their best stuff, what could you give? So give that. So your base of your pyramid is that free stuff your blog stuff, your podcasts, your interviews that you do with other, other people, articles that you write, press releases. Then from there, that's, that's the biggest layer, the free layer, because that should be accessed by thousands of people. The lower levels then, as they get progressively narrower, you get into things that you charge for, and they tend to be, starts with a higher volume but lower value stuff. So this will be your eBooks, Kindle books, short video courses, maybe premium webinars that people have to buy. 
And as you move up then, you get the, the volume gets lower, but the value gets higher. And and what we the 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 theory then tells us that there will be similar levels of, actually of profitability to be gained from every level. So you get lower volume but higher value towards the top. And this tends to be more of a done for you market than a DIY market. Makes sense. You should absolutely not be providing services at the free level or at the very low cost level, right? Unless you're making your business on Fiverr. So let's visualize this then. This starts quite simple. So we've got our pyramid base at the bottom and that's our free stuff. Then moving on from there, we get into our low cost, low value information products, right? So low cost, high volume. That's our Kindle books, eBooks and webinars. Building from there, you get into more premium products. So we've got a narrower market. I mean, the, the, the pyramid probably isn't representative. This should actually narrow down much quicker, I think. But, you know, that doesn't fit the writing. So premium products. Courses that, so if you imagine the free stuff, then you've got the, the maybe the, the single figure stuff, and then you've got two figures, then three figures, then four figures, maybe five figures, right? So we're going up by an order of magnitude every time. We're going up by a factor of maybe 10. And the size of the market is probably reducing by a factor of 10, but hey, that's okay. And that's where we get the similar level of value from each layer of the market. This is why we should be addressing each layer of the market. So premium products quite often meaning courses like this course would would count as a premium product this is not a low-end information product beyond that then you start to get service which basically means your time or your clients time mixed in with the product so that might be a coached course so for this we might um, talk about inner circle groups you know where you get the information product and you get coaching calls Right, which may be one to many or even one to one. When I started my pro web design course back in 2010, I offered all of the foundation group half hour Skype calls every week during that, that period. It made it much more of a premium product. It was about $2,000 back then. Right? But um, what, you, what you then find is you, you can find a trickle down as well, but we won't get into that. Then at the, the pinnacle, very top of the pyramid, you get your top ticket offering, which generally means consulting. This is your done for you stuff. So what you'll notice is a few patterns going on here. As you move up the pyramid, the your time starts to be factored in towards the top. I mean, your time is involved in all of that stuff. It takes time to write a blog post, but you write it once and then it's out there for the world. You're dangling in the stream, attracting visitors. It takes time to make information products and courses, but you can sell that stuff over and over again. You cannot sell one hour of your time over and over again. So at the where pure service belongs is at the very top of the pyramid. You find DIY stuff at the bottom. That's like the bottom three layers. And then there's some done for you at the top and maybe in the second one down as well. And you it's interesting to visualize you at the top of this pyramid because people get closer to you, closer to your inner circle. They get more intimate with your brand. Um, and, you know, maybe they have your email address high, higher up or, or, or your Skype ID. You know, they, they actually get contact with you. So that's where you sit in the conceptual model. So the free level what we're saying to the world at the free level is, I'm going to tell you why this is important and what you should do. All right? So if I get up on stage in my 30 minute um, presentation about web design is dead and the future of web design, I'm going to tell you what this problem is. And um, I'm going to tell you what you should be doing. You should be moving one way or the other way. Don't stay there because you'll die. Not literally die. At the second level, we're going beyond me telling you what you should do, right? I'm going to tell you how to do it. You've bought my $19, $29 product. I'm going to tell you how to do it because I've now got three hours with you. So I can give you some steps. I can give you some cheat sheets. I can give you some flow charts. I can give you scripts, stuff to follow. This is the how to do it. 
Then we get to the premium level, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. The Ultimate Web Design course is more than a manual. The Ultimate Web Design course includes case studies, real world case studies that take many, many hours. So what I'm, I'm not just telling you how to do it, I'm showing you, I'm doing it. I'm recording that, I'm sharing it with you. Because there's a difference between being told how to do it and it being modeled for you. And that's why it's worth more. When you get up to the coaching level, getting down to the inner circle, I'll coach you how to do it. That means that I'm not just doing it, but you're gonna try it and I'm gonna help you. So more of my time is then involved because there's either some one-to-many or one-to-one -one time involved. And at the very top level, of course, it's done for you. I'll do it for you. All right, so let's get this, um, I think this is a really useful little ladder of how we can uh, conceptualize what we're actually offering to people and what we should be offering to people at each level. So we shouldn't be doing do it for you down at the $10, $20 mark. It just doesn't work, right? And at the very top level, people aren't expecting, I'll tell you what you should do, right? I'm, I'm gonna, actually gonna come in and implement this for you. Then we want to bring in something else because if you think about it, for each of these things, okay, then the awareness ladder comes into play. Because each of these things is a sale in itself, has a conversion point of its own. So if I think about you know, how might somebody um, come across ultimate web design, um, become start to become a believer, maybe buy a book, then maybe sign up for the course, then maybe want to join my inner circle, right? So you you come along, you you get a read some blog posts, and you think, wow, this is what this is speaking my language. I I get this, I'm I I believe I agree with this guy's um, assessment of the of the world and and the problems that we face. Um, so the conversion point. Let's right. We, we mustn't forget that free stuff has a conversion in mind. Why do we publish free stuff unless there's some kind of conversion? What do we mean by conversion? We mean that we are changing the state of our visitor from one state to another state. And ideally, the goal of your free content is to get people's email address. That is the default, that is the most popular thing you wanna do, and for good reason, email addresses and the email um, channel is extremely useful. So the conversion goal, that there is a step five, right, of, of my free stuff. I want you to be convinced enough about what I'm telling you that you want to start following, or you want to start following my Facebook page, or you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, or become a Twitter follower. Whatever it is, there should be a conversion event. And if we're not pushing for a conversion event with our free stuff, then we ought to be. Um, download my free ebook in return for your email address, okay? That's one sale. Then you read the free ebook, and then at the end of the free ebook, there ought to be another call to action saying, now do this. So, what's happening then is we're looping around to get involved with some of my premium offerings. So, we've got a cycle then. You go through the free stuff, there's a conversion at the end of that. I want your contact information so I can tell you about new problems. So we start again at step zero with the information products. And I try you on that. And if you unsubscribe, you unsubscribe. You are never going to become a high value customer. Um, but if you're interested in my in my short courses, maybe, or you're interested in buying this, this $19 book, then that's a good sign. It's This is somebody who's willing to put their hand in their pocket. And this is somebody who <clears throat> believes enough in the issue to want to do something about it and to invest in doing something about it. So then there's another sale. Hey, buy the Ultimate Web Design Manual. And if we get through that, so we, we introduce the problem, which you, you should be starting to, to know about, but we're getting into a bit more specific, a bit more detailed maybe. Step two, step three, convince you, get you to buy. 
then the people who buy that, maybe then we, we start to go into the premium products. And the people who get into the premium products, then you might be wanting to start recruiting for coaching. Maybe an, a, a monthly membership group, something like that. And you can always be promoting the, the pure done-for-you service, which is, in some extent, a, a different market. There will be some people who haven't got time for a coached course. Right? So there is a, a bit of a gap sometimes, I think, between the, the product market and the service market. So we should always have that service thing out there. So that's really the, the picture. Now, that's quite complicated, right? How to visualize this, this looping round from free through to low value to mid value to high value to, to the inner circle. So I kind of slept on it and I, I came up with another picture. And this, this is the best image that I could find. It's actually a fruit bowl. But this is the model that I think it would be useful for us to have in our minds. It's a spiral. And it's a spiral that goes through, loops round and round those awareness steps. Right? You start at the, the wide diameter, which is your free stuff. This was what was the bottom of our pyramid, but now, in a way, it's kind of become a, a funnel. But it's not just a direct funnel. Right? This is a, a funnel where you go round many times, like a helter skelter. And some people will stay just being a follower, just lurking and following your blog posts and you know, reading your stuff, maybe getting your emails, maybe for years. But one day, those people might have suddenly the budget, the desire, they might lose their job, they might get a payoff and think, do you know what? It's time for me to take that course and get their card out. Or they may, f may find themselves in a particular job in a situation where there's suddenly an urgent need and there's budget available, there's pain, there's urgency, and they go, I'm going to hire that guy, the guy whose emails I've been reading, whose blog posts I've been following, whose podcasts I've been listening to for all those years. That's the guy. I believe in that guy. All right? That's why we should never overlook any of these layers. We should never overlook the free market because the free market may be buying your lunch in a few years time maybe next week we don't know so we loop round and as we loop round we find the the level where we're comfortable we find our own orbit and some people through doing this and remember all of this is centered around a single point this is this spiral isn't one random course over there and another you know random book somewhere else it's all about the same thing. And this is why the you at, at the middle is so important. Why who you are, why you do what you do, what you stand for, what the world can count on you for. That's why all this is so important because that should come through every single layer. And to be quite honest, I'm totally restructuring my business around this now, right? Ultimate web design this strategic approach is what I'm all about now. I'm not, you won't find me doing courses on Facebook marketing or SEO from 2015 because this is my thing. And I think that you know, when, you, when you start doing that and everything rings with that same resonance, that great things can happen. So here's an easier way then to, to visualize all of that. I, I love the fruit bowl. And uh, you know if that lodges in your brain, then great. If you looked at that fruit bowl from the top, you would see something like a spiral. Now, I actually believe in, in real life, uh, getting geeky, the, the outer ed end of the spiral should be broader. You know, It should actually, because the market's much, much bigger. I've, I've had millions of people literally read my blog posts. I've had thousands of people buy my ebooks and I've had dozens of people sign up for this course. Okay, so it, it really should get smaller, but you can't write on a spiral like that. So let's write on it. You start with the free stuff at the outside, like we've said, the spiral goes round. You've got your low value, lower investment stuff at the bottom. We're talking about your investment, not the customers. Goes through to the higher value and then in the middle, you've got your inner circle stuff. Now, every time you loop round this thing, you're actually going round the awareness ladder steps. 
Sometimes the awareness of the problem may already be there and you can kind of skip that. Particularly if you're talking about, okay, look, you know the situation, you know the situation, you know what's happening with web design, you know what's happening with the market, I don't need to tell you again, right? But you have to go around step zero, step one, to step two, right? Step one is awareness of the problem, step two, solutions exist, step three, but here's our better solution, step four, I'm now convinced of its benefits to me, step five, I'm ready to buy. Then we've got a different line. That line represents a conversion event. The conversion event may be, I will put in my email address and join your mailing list, or it may be, I will put in my credit card and pay you $2,000. But each time there's a conversion event, I'm gonna say yes to something, I'm gonna commit, I'm gonna join, I'm gonna buy. And then of course you are in the middle of all of that. So I think this is an incredibly useful model that actually combines the power of the 80-20 principle and the power of the awareness ladder and is helpful to us in many ways. So three reasons why it's so powerful. One, it makes us, forces us to consider what products and services we could be offering to the market to maximize revenues at each level in the marketplace. Because I really believe if we're only working at one or two of these levels, we're leaving money on the table. It's important to give people the opportunity to hire you if it's going to be at the right rate. It's important to be putting out your content free to the world, but don't be giving out your absolute best stuff. This video is not going out to the world for free. This is the best content that I can possibly give you today. Right? So this isn't going to be available to the world for free, maybe in two or three years' time, but by then we've moved on. This model helps us to visualize that customer journey in a very clear way, right the way from the outer orbit to the inner orbit. And some customers may never make it all the way inside, but that's okay. As long as we can serve them, as long as we can count them as part of our tribe, there are many layers, levels to our tribe, to our following, and they're all important. And it reminds us, of course, to design follow-up sequences for all of our customers into our campaigns that are going to guide them to those next levels. If somebody buys the free ebook, don't stop there. Right? Let them know about the next thing. Congratulate them. Ask them what they thought of the book. Ask them how they're, they're using this in their own business. Get into conversation with them. There's always things that we can do. And I think that the, that spiral model will really help us to, to visualize these things more evenly. And, you know, here's one of the most important things I think about this whole process is that we know what we should be addressing at each point in a campaign so that we don't miss bits, but also in a way that helps us to focus on the important things at every step. Mm -hmm.